Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another movie reaction and commentary. Today, we're going to be hopping into Django Unchained. I am super excited to see this again, especially, you know, with Quentin Tarantino being the director of this film. Um, we are going to be kind of going through a lot of his films, uh, just, you know, re-examining them, restudying them, just, you know, uh, dusting off some of his older films and then kind of just re-watching them and gaining more information and more appreciation for uh, you know the beautiful mind of Quentin Tarantino in my honest opinion and Django Unchained is definitely uh, one to not be left out of that uh, if I can be honest with you I remember first seeing this and I'm you know just on an entertainment level just having such a blast and you know not seeing uh, history depicted in that time frame uh, you know spun into a satire um, you know not that I can remember off the top of my head and how it was done and you know why it was done and just you know themes that were circulating around this film uh that kept it very genuine and uh, in my opinion uh, they didn't come off as disrespectful or anything like that but instead an incredible uh love story that takes place in a time period that is lacking of love and i was greatly uh entertained to kind of see the performances within this film as well too um and i'm trying my best to kind of re recollect uh recollect what i felt and how i felt and why that i felt during my first experience watching this so it's gonna be really um exciting seeing me kind of dig back up those memories myself and hopefully go deeper into why i thought those things into you know why Quentin Tarantino is is shooting his film the way that he's shooting and hopefully i can do the same towards you guys and your appreciation to not just Django Unchained but hopefully to uh film in general or anything like that so yeah i'm excited guys i'm really um excited to jump into this again um you know i i love being able to go back and re-watch certain things such as this and where it's like dead so like always if you want to be able to support the channel you can definitely do so uh, on the patreon uh, i probably would highly recommend if you would like to hear everything that i have to say about this film because this is a you know a longer and more uh compact compact dense film that's probably gonna be a lot of commentary that uh, especially since this is my second time watching this um definitely check out the patreon you don't have to but if you would like to uh you know learn more or hear all that i have to say about this film you can check the patreon for the full length y'all it'll be right out right when the youtube edit drops so if you want to do that you can at the end of the day you can also leave a like comment and subscribe it really does help your boy out so again if you can do a thumbs up that would mean a lot to your boy and um you know at the very least just being able to just relax sit back and again just enjoy yourself seriously i really hope that you guys can just at the very least just enjoy the time that you have with you know this video or the channel or just the community below like everything i just i just hope that you guys are good so again with that being said i'm excited to hop into this unfortunately i can't wear this hat because um yeah it's it's just it's just a little too big <laughs> and i can't wear my headphones in it but yeah i just wanted to whip this out anyway because you know why not it fits the theme uh also happy black history month to all my brothers and sisters out there seriously i think it's so dope to see all this thriving um you know, especially during a, a time where everyone involved uh, is definitely going through it. But, you know, for all my African-Americans, you know, um, yeah, we we've we've been we've been through some struggles. So it's nice to see us really still sticking through it, you know, still going through it and, you know, sticking together and remaining to be together as best as we possibly can. So I love y'all. Seriously, you know, black is beautiful. So uh, without further ado, let's hop right into Django Unchained. Again, guys, if you want to be able to watch and hear all that I have to say about this film, because I probably will say a lot about this film, definitely check out the full length below, y'all. I want to be able to say this too. I love how this scene is lit here. And I'm, you know, obviously, yeah, it is lit, but. <laughs> Just technically speaking, the lighting, they probably have a giant overhead light above them to kind of showcase the lighting from the full moon. But also notice how all the other light source as well, you know, they, they help us navigate the scene and it makes sense of it, you know, especially when it's in the dark. It creates this really cool glow 
on the branches of the top of the trees there. Oh, very well. God, and he shot the horse. Oh my goodness, man. Oh my goodness, man. You know, honestly, he kind of, like he could be low key a long lost cousin or brother or of Lansda or whatever his name was in Inglorious Bastards. <laughs> to finish my line of inquiry with young Django. Honestly, now that I think about it, he's like the good version <laughs> of uh of of his character in Inglorious Bastards. That iron is nasty business. I love that Quentin Tarantino, um, or you know whoever advised him on set, you know went far enough to show or do work on the ankles around Django's, uh, uh, you know around his around his ankles after releasing the chains. Similar to what just happened there on that scene, the reason why I love this film is because it doesn't romanticize a lot of the brutality. Um, simply because they highlight these moments. The brutality does garner itself as warranted <laughs> because they're showing the hideous side of things. Whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell you think you're doing, boy? Get that nigger out of here. I love that. Every time he turns around, the little thing hits him in the back of the head. Small little detail that I just really love. Remember? Get the like, he's so disturbed. He doesn't even care that that thing nearly whacked his ish, man. <laughs> I'm a dentist, right. are you? <laughs> Despite the... <laughs> I just laugh, bro. <laughs> Ah, the world's end. That's what that's what it reminds me of. Every time he does that. You guys know that movie, you know what's up. And they give you a reward? Ooh, certain people, yeah. Some bad people. Ah. Badder they are, bigger the reward. I love how the lighting is on this. It's very reminiscent on Inglorious Bastards, actually, in the first scene. If you would look at that scene, at how the lighting is hitting their drinks, uh, and that scene being the milk. Similar to how it's hitting the beer here. However, at this endeavor, I'm at, I'm at a slight disadvantage so far. Yeah, man, Jimmy Fox rocks that look, man. It's so good. You could just see it in his eyes, man. I know they've done a lot of work around him, but it's just his eyes that draw me in. And that's all Jamie. Town and show your ass. <laughs> <laughs> In the gut, too. That's going to hurt. Oh, man. That's a brutal way to die, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But you guys see what I'm talking about? Again, I'm drawing parallels to Inglorious Bastards because that's my other commentary that I did. But Quentin Tarantino and his films, literally anybody could be a standout. Like that dude who is now dead. His acting was really good. I really enjoyed his performance for like the five seconds. He owned it. Shout out to that guy. You got sand, Django. Boys got sand. I got and I gotta say too, Jamie Foxx, I don't think gets enough credit for, you know, really being in, you know, what I'm gonna assume to be the same instruments that were used on Slaves. Which I have no doubt must have caused some very interesting conversations in his head. Your slave wife speaks German and her name is Brunilde von Schaft. Yep. <laughs> I love the genuine, like, confusion. <laughs> I love how the story can progress, but at the same time, entertain us with, you know, him just trying on some drip. <laughs> he ain't like any of the other niggas around here. You got it? You want I should treat him like white folks? No. <laughs> 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 
He said, no, <laughs> that's not what I said. <laughs> oh, God, yo, that's hilarious, man. Again, just like all these characters just owning it. And then you have Leo, <laughs> who we haven't even gotten to yet. Baby, three brothers? Uh-huh. They here? Uh-huh. Could you point one of them out to me? Well, one's over wow, dude, his eyes are just everything in this film, man. Damn, Jamie. Like, you can just see the intent. He does such a great job characterizing his eyes and where they're looking at. Giving them such great emotion. John Brill. Called his name out. He said, no fake names. I'm calling you out by your, by your real one. Remember me? <laughs> Remember me? <laughs> fire. So fire. Oh my god, it's so cold. I like the way you die, boy. God! The delivery of that line with the fall of his weight is just. Man. You want to talk about cathartic? <laughs> Us trying to, you know, ask for our reparations over and over and over again. <laughs> you beat the crap out of that dude. This moment right here gives me shivers, man. Yes. Yes, what? Yes, I'm sure that's Ellis Brittle. Man. Dog. <laughs> Insane. Insane. Blood on the, on the cotton fields, man. <laughs> oh man. Well, shit far. If you don't wear them as you ride up, that just defeats the purpose. Well, I can't see in this fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, the practicality of um, you know, the KKK is very it, it, it's it's it comes into conflict, you know, <laughs> when you think of the practicality. But nobody can see. So, so it would be nice to see. <laughs> It'd be nice to see. <laughs> what? They tricked him. Well, where are they? I'll beat us in. Oh my goodness! <laughs> even even Jago was like, "Whoa, <laughs> yeah, bro, yeah." Shout out to all those horses for that scene. I know they probably are low key, a little traumatized, but they are trained very well. He's getting away. The sound, the cinematography, and the emotion of that. Brilliant. So well done. So many ways they could have shot that, but the fact that they chose to shoot it like that. It's pretty cool and speaks to Django because this is a story about him. A fellow named Siegfried. Hmm. The secret saver? Quite spectacularly so. I love this moment, man. The fact that they linger with this again just proves my love towards this film. Fire. Because at the end of the day, you know, they're trying to tell a story, a good story, an intimate one. Everything else doesn't really, you know, it's a part of it, but it doesn't overshadow that intimacy we have with Django's story. This scene right here is actually low-key one of my favorites because they, they could have done without this scene. But the fact that they've included this one in here and held on it for so long to question the morality behind what he does just to prove that he's more human than just his revenge is, I think, super brilliant. Dude, the blood in this film, especially in this scene. I'm not going to lie, it's very satisfying. 
It's so red. I gotta say, whoever gave Mississippi their name can, you know. This is Django Freeman. Django, this is Mr. Candy's lawyer, Leonid Moby. Just call me Leo. That's crazy. I'm look. I'm just noticing that statue right there to the left. How it was like an Egyptian, but <laughs> it was a white Egyptian. <laughs> That's wild. I did not see that last time. Why do you want to get in the Mandingo business? <laughs> Yeah, man. And here you go. Here we go. We got freaking Leo and his character. My goodness, man. I'm bored. This seems like a good bit of fun. <laughs> he plays it so well. He plays it so well, man. Ah, oh, he's not doing what I told him. For God's sake. This is crazy, man. This is this is cheese, bro. The sound of like ribs breaking and just bones colliding, man. It's 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 really it's sadistic, man. It's, it's hard to hear, it's hard to watch, and as it should be. D J A N G O. The D is silent. I know. God, fierce man. That is such a delivery. <laughs> That is such a delivery. $12,000. Gentlemen, you have my curiosity. But now you have my attention. Yeah, yeah, he perked up when he heard $12,000. How much was $12,000 back then? This is like mid going on late 1800s. How much was $12,000? Oh my goodness. That has to be like way over a hundred grand, maybe even two hundred grand over. The name of the game is keep up, not catch up, nigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yo, I like <laughs> how you get how you get thrown off your horse like that with your horse. Everybody, stop antagonizing my get. And I love that he was the like quicker to the draw than all of them. That was. Dude, he plays, he plays a racist all the time, and every time, I love him in it. <laughs> He's a great actor, man. I really do appreciate the, the lengths this film goes to in showing the different T not, I don't want to say tears. They're all the same, but just avenues of this ideology of how black people, slaves are treated, man. And just how it was associated with people's ideologies in different locations. Like this in the deep south, man. Oh, man, dude. It's, it's otherworldly almost compared to the other places even though it's all the same it's just man deep south is just like the environment represents that so clearly it almost feels like the sky can't even breathe like everything is just shrouded in in just this thick woods so what about my 500 dollars huh what about my 500 dollars <laughs> yo every time he says that <laughs> I'm like, damn, Leo, you sound you sound real crazy right there. <laughs> God, man, dude. Like, there are just some things no human should have to really witness or hear or have to even think about. There's definitely one of them getting mauled by dogs. But I think it's just a testament to just show you how... Fierce Django is right here. He's not lost sight. Oh my god, yeah, there's another heavy hitter. Freaking Samuel L. Jackson. Oh my goodness. I don't know why I just forgot about him. That's crazy. 
I think the greatest rendition of an Uncle Ruckus to ever be brought forth to a film. Like, my goodness, y'all. Wanna well, know my name or the name of my horse? You ask me. Hey, who the hell you calling Snowball, horse boy? I'll snatch your black ass off that nigga. Yeah. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Oh, dog. Yo. The performances in this film is just upper tier. Jimmy Fox, man, you knocked it out the park, man. You brought your A game to this. Hildy, this is Dr. Schultz. And that's when Dr. Schultz is like, wow, she is stunning. He speaks German, don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> that little. <laughs> And I shall bring I'm much obliged. <laughs> He's like, all right, that's enough. Bye. <laughs> I got to say, what's about to happen out of all the cathartic deaths in this film, um, they don't hold a flame to the catharsis of these two finally meeting each other. And I think that right there is why this film is really good. <laughs> and why it didn't shoot itself in the foot. Ich will not nicht schreien werden. Carrie Washington does such a great job with her emotions. Just keeping her emotions bottled in so she doesn't explode with them. But I think that just makes the scene that much more powerful. Hey, little troublemaker. Silver tongue devil, you. <laughs> that is such a great moment. That is so good. That is such a great moment. You right, Miss Your Candy. You right. I handle it myself. Mm -hmm. Put me in the library. I just can't understand why you won't come. To I wonder if he, if he knew it was important because of the location he said to meet him at. Because now that I think about it, later on in the scene. You know, uh, later in the climax, you know, it's set in the library where he's doing his whole monologue and everything. And just examining Leo's character a little bit more and how he's built himself up with this layer of fix, fictitious education. I think it's very fascinating. I think it may also have to do with potentially his father as well. Took care of my daddy and my daddy's daddy. Damn, man. Just goes to show you how far back this goes, man. Sheesh. Growing up the son of a of a huge plantation owner in Mississippi puts The fact that it sunk its way into someone's ideology and their way of living. That's that's pretty dangerous. Be associated with submissiveness is larger than any human or any other subhuman species on planet Earth. And I do got to say, I do got to commend Quentin Tarantino for really taking it here. You know, I mentioned it before where, you know, we seem to be traveling with different ideologies of around slavery and how people find their identity and their ways of living around something that is inherently bad. Dimples. Here, here, and here. Because any common folk person looking at this and hearing what he's saying would be like, what the hell are you talking about? But, you know, I think <laughs> it speaks to his character because that's all he is, a product of his environment. If you lift those palms off that turtle shell tabletop, Mr. Pooch is going to let loose with both barrels that sawed off. The fact that he's actually, he actually cut himself. He actually is bleeding. Man, shivers, man. Leo's crazy. Love it. Man, this is this is intense, man. This is intense. Leo knocked it out the park, man. Wow. See, what I'm noticing about Leo's character, Mr. Candy, is like um, he's found this 
great knack for business and what he does because that's all he's known for his entire life and he's found his meaning in it but he's gone a step further in saying like no this is this is the way of life for everyone what i'm doing is, is something that needs to be done and known across the entire world which is an ideology and unfortunately it's a very faulty one <laughs> But I think it just goes to show you how dangerous one can be when they fully dive into their immersion and their ideolo ideology, that of a false one. You know, they can still be very capable and still just as dangerous as anybody else who believes in a good ideology. I figured you must be an admirer. You named your slave after his novel's lead character. I love how this is his way of breaking him down. This is last one. He's like... He's like, if I'm going to go, I'm going to at least tell you, let you know how stupid you are and your ideology. Soft-hearted Frenchie. Alexandre Dumas is black. <laughs> yep. He's just like, hey, you got all these books. You're still stupid as hell, bro. If you insist. That is the that is the coldest thing I have seen in a minute, man. <laughs> that was cold blooded, dog. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Damn, man. R.I.P., bro. That was a way to go. That was a way to go. He went out slinging, man. Oh man, dude, it just gets better. <laughs> yeah, this is where Quentin is just like flexing, just absolute flexing. This is just maddening, bro. How? This is insane. Hey, no. I love how painted, how painted the scene is right now, just filled with blood. Damn. I'm so mad I can't play this song over it because of copyright reasons, but you guys know what's playing, all right? Cock a doodle doo, nigga. <laughs> God damn it, dude. <laughs> Yo, he plays every role. Like, golly, man. He's always a trip whenever I see him on screen. Murder? I ain't no goddamn slave. Stagecoach robbery. Do I sound like a fucking slave? $7,000 hmm? for Smitty back. Oh, shit like And just love that. Love that. You can see the, the workings of his, his predecessor, his teacher, his mentor, his friend leading over here when he's on his own it's it's really nice to see you want no slave you, you fucking sure about that damn sure i love that we had some built-up tension with him he was like a character in this film as well even though we only saw several frames of him and his expression and his reaction to django and they're perfect that's good to know. <laughs> Golly, bro. Yo, Gunslinger is well deserved for Django. Oh, man. The way he ices people is just like. He ices them before they can. Before, before they are even iced, man. <laughs> he liquefies them. D'Artagnan, <laughs> motherfucker. Oh man! Oh, bruh, yo! I forgot he does that. I forgot he does that. Like he just walks up in there and just, dude, it's so great. <laughs> God, what a shot, man! What a shot right there. Let's go, man. Second best cathartic release. So fire, dude. So fire. Like, yo. By by, oh. 
Y'all gonna be together with Calvin in the by and by. <laughs> oh man, cold blooded. Love this. And he looks dapper. Bro, the quickness, man. The quickness. Shout out to the editor as well for really emphasizing that. Oh, man. The giant go, you black son of a bitch. Do you sound hippie? Bruh. Oh, my goodness, man. The coldness is freezing. <laughs> Miss Laura, goodbye. Bye, Miss Laura. <laughs> Y'all two run along. I love that. I love that. I love that she just got zooted out the frame. <laughs> I count six shots, nigga. I count two guns, nigga. <laughs> oh man, this is this is for real black on black crime. I'm not even gonna lie to you, <laughs> but. He deserves this, bro. Single word that came out of Calvin Candy's mouth was nothing but hoax. But he was right by one thing. I am that one nigga in 10,000. Yo, the coldness, man. The coldness of this scene, of this line, of this movement. Brother, oh my goodness. Jango! You open it, son of a... Dude. <laughs> That's so dope, man. That's so dope. The most swagged out film in a minute. Guys, and that is the end to Django Unchained. All right, everybody, we just got done Django Unchained. This was such a great film to rewatch. There was a lot of things I was able to really pick up, more so with the subcontext of character motivation, character ideology, just how um, you know certain people came to be, right? Because it, it it brings forth an even greater experience because this is actual history, um, and I think just tacking on this with you know the filmmaking aspect and having a director as visceral and as visual as quentin tarantino i think makes for a very in-depth uh study um not just with history but with film with art with uh themes with ideology and i think that's such a cool way to just uh, uh tackle anything really it, it gives a lot to to give and there's a lot on the plate that you can definitely consume and this one definitely serves up a buffet of of things that you can you know break down so i don't know if i can really go into it without it being like an hour long but primarily um the experience of watching this again uh now older with more life experience uh, along with my filmmaking as well too uh and and, and growing with this world that we're all growing in as well too just seeing the good of this film i think is super important and i know i can't speak for everyone and I, i'm not trying to i'm more just speaking for myself um you know being a a, a, a black person in america an african-american um, but primarily being a human first uh, this film is just a gracious gracious cathartic release not because you know it's shown out here like we're killing racist white people or anything like that just racist bigotry and just um you know slave owners you know like which is good <laughs> i'm not gonna front that is a good thing uh because they're very bad people but the thing that human james really loves um is just the love story that was woven in between all of this you know if i were to pass this through filters of me right if human james comes first and then there's african-american james and then there's filmmaker james all this you know different parts departments of myself but all of it is within a human version of me uh that's emotion you know and that can be related to everyone i think the beautiful thing that bridges this story that 
I'm not gonna lie, does have a lot of bias, you know, from my end, um, uh, for the right reasons, duh. But I think the best bridge that all of us can connect with is the love story that happens here because love is a very human thing. And love is the one thing I think was uh, one of the many things that were robbed from, uh, you know, just the people, African Americans. Uh, and it's really great to kind of see the inhumane be kind of transformed and, you know, metamorphosized and shunned away with quite literally a story about love. I think that's, it sounds cheesy. And I know that doesn't take away any of the things that happened prior, duh. It, it will never, right? Um, we will never forget that. I think no one should ever forget that. But I think there is a great joy to be had when we're able to, all of us, experience a film as great as this, in my opinion, as great as this, that centers itself on a human theme rather than a theme that maybe I could have only rela related to, which is rage, right? Um, uh, or African Americans watching this could have related to, which is rage and hurt and, um, you know, inhumane acts that has happened upon our culture and our, and our people. But again, I think the fact that love is what what won overall just just is it's it means a lot to me personally it means a lot to me so i had a blast with that love to hear your thoughts on this as always guys i appreciate y'all so much for the love and support and um stay healthy and stay hydrated because we are just getting started and happy 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 black history month to all my people out there we already know that we it's not just one month all right it's every damn day every damn waking minute that we wake up it's loving yourself that goes beyond that of you know <laughs> just skin but you know if you know, talk about just African Americans right here. Happy Black History Month, man. For real. Seriously. I love y'all. Stay healthy again. Stay hydrated because we are just getting started. Purple jacket, pocket full of weed. Everything that I should ever need. Grab some matches because they give them free. Just like my time.